Dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the feast of the dedication of the Lateran Basilica, the mother of all churches. It is where we learn of the Basilica or the church as a dwelling place of God, where God dwells. Yes, of course, God dwells everywhere because he's omnipresent. He's present everywhere. But in a special way, we look at the church as a, a place of worship. Before we look at the Lateran Basilica, we remember that as Christians grew up slowly by slowly and as the religion Christianity was growing up, the followers of Christ, the followers of the, those who share good news everywhere, yeah? as they were growing up, they started with small numbers. They went through persecutions. They were, some of them were imprisoned, killed for their faith, but they never gave up. That seed of goodness, the seed of the good news, continued growing. We remember the persecutions, for example, in the Roman Empire, whereby Christianity as a tiny religion enters that empire, finding the hesitation, the blocks, the resistance of the traditional beliefs of the time. And but we see the Christians growing slowly by slowly with their goodness, winning evil with their goodness. And we see even the Domus Ecclesia. They see there that they had this house churches whereby the Christians were in the homes. They used to gather together in the homes in small groups to, on Sundays to listen to God's word and also to break and share the bread together and grow together as a community, as a family, as brothers and sisters. And the people used to look for them especially the, the ones within the Roman Empire who have looked at Christianity as a threat. They started looking for them and killing them and persecuting them. And these are the martyrs who never gave up and that seed of their persecution became the life. Their blood became life for all of us Christians all over the world. They didn't give up. So my brother, my sister, don't give up in sharing the good news, no matter the persecutions, no matter the persecutions, no matter the difficulties. Don't give up. Just spread that seed of good news in the families. Let's make the families a place of prayer, a place where God can dwell and where we can encounter God and God meets us. Where we can encounter God in, in our brothers and sisters, where we can encounter God in the husband, in the wife, in the children, and everyone at home, where we can count, encounter God in every human person. Remember, everything started from the family. The family as a place of prayer, where we talk to God and God talks to us, where God consoles us, where God encourages us, where God shows us the way. Let us keep that fire at home. Now, as the Christians grew in numbers and the Christianity became slowly by slowly the religion organized within the Roman Empire where everything started to reach the rest of the world. Remember, everything started here in Holy Land with the whole life of Christ coming as the Messiah here in the Holy Land with the Old Testament which Christ comes to fulfill and then it spreads through the Roman Empire and we see that Christianity entering that as a tiny seed it continues to grow in the families and from the families it reaches to the rest of the places. So as the number was growing of the believers who used to gather together to listen to the word of God which is spirit and life to nourish their souls because when we nourish our souls and hearts we nourish our bodies the number was growing when they gathered together to partake of the body and blood of Christ and they were strengthened in spite of the persecutions and now that's why the churches started being a kind of developed and now not only the churches but also the basilica because the number was becoming big and big and big where we had even the we have the cathedral the place where are the bishop usually uh, takes the city and it continues to be the presence of Christ among his people, the cathedral, the cathedral's chair, which is a symbol of authority, which is a symbol of service with humility, which all of us 
especially the church leaders, but all of us Christians, human people, are invited to be to serve with the humility, with the authority that God has given us, so that we can share this with others. And that's why today, the first basilica from where all other churches and basilicas developed is St. John Lateran. That's where we celebrate this feast of the dedication of the basilica, the dwelling place of God. We are not only celebrating the building, that's very good, but especially the church as a place, dwelling place of God. We are celebrating our families as a dwelling place of God. We are celebrating every place, every person as a place where God dwells and reveals himself to us. Do you, and we hear in today's uh, um, uh, first reading, Prophet Ezekiel chapter 47, where he talks about the vision of life-giving water, which was flowing from the church, from the temple, and reaching and going out to the rest of the world, whereby whenever it passed, it gave life, nourishment. It was medicine, reminding that we people who belong to the temple, to the church, are invited to be people who give nourishment wherever we go, who give life wherever we go, who wash others of their dirt of sin and badness wherever we go. With our goodness, we wash off the dirt of sin as the water wash, washes off, who feed others, who nourish others the way the water nourishes others, who gives fresh air for others the way water gives fresh air, who also gives food to others, whose leaves are even medicine, who are medicinal, so that we as a church, people of God, flowing from the temple, we are invited to go wherever we go to share this nourishment, this life, this waters of goodness to all the people we meet, to be a medicine to others with our words and action, the way water makes the plants grow, which plants give food, they also give medicine, that we too with our lives, with our words, with our actions, we are invited to be like that water which gives life and makes things grow to help others grow so that we are a medicine for others with the way we talk to them and the way we live our life. Is your life a medicine for others? Do others feel consolation, consoled because of the way you speak and the way you do things? This is the challenge we have because in today's also second reading we hear that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. And that's why it is a, our bodies is a place where God dwells, where he resides. We are a presence of God for others. Not only my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, even others are also having their bodies as temple of the Holy Spirit. And we need to take care of our body, our spirit, not all of our own, but also of the body and spirit and the lives of others to be strengthened with that life of God in us because we are temples of the Holy Spirit, because the Spirit of God dwells with us in, with His gifts to share these gifts of goodness to others, the gifts of joy, the gifts of peace, the gifts of love, solidarity, generosity, patience, care, tenderness, to share them with others because God dwells within us and within the hearts and lives of others to be the presence of God in the family, in the community, in the school, at work, on the way as we walk, that when people see us, they see the goodness of God in the way we talk and in the way we do and live. That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, dear friends, that reminds us of us being the temple of the Lord. Let us honor Take care of our temple, of our bodies, of our souls, and the bodies and souls of others. And finally, in the gospel of today, we hear Jesus entering the temple and cleaning off all the people who are turned in the place which is supposed to be a place of prayer into business. Unfortunately, today, our looking outside, people do no longer sell many things inside the temple, but outside. They don't even think of going for prayer. They just think of only on their strength. The Lord invites us to look at Him, to look up to Him, to take care of that body of the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in us. And the temple that Jesus is talking about in today's gospel, 
of John chapter 2 verses 13 to 22 the new temple is the Lord Jesus Christ with his good news who comes to clean us to wash us of our sin and who dwells in us with us in the with the spirit that is in us that moves us to do good at all times wherever we go to speak as Jesus speaks to do things as Jesus does things and to live our life as a presence where God can dwell. Let's pray, dear friends, that wherever we are, people can experience that tenderness of God, that fatherhood of God, that motherhood of God, that friendship of God, that healing presence of God, that protective presence of God. God bless you, dear friends, from Ratsborn Salations, Jerusalem.